After studying this module, you shall be able to know as to what is interpersonal attraction, identify the various determinants of interpersonal attraction and learn the various theories of interpersonal attraction. Human beings are social animals. Forming and maintaining intimate and long-term relationships with others is a very crucial aspect of our lives. Interpersonal attraction plays a key role in relationship formation. A very pertinent question is how do we get attracted to others and how do we select mates? There are many factors which determine interpersonal attraction. These can be divided into internal and external determinants and factors based on interaction with others. Let's look at the internal determinants of attraction. The first is the need to affiliate. According to many researchers, the tendency to affiliate has a neurobiological basis. The need to affiliate with others is one of the main concerns of humans and is crucial to psychological well-being. This also has an evolutionary advantage since interaction and cooperation with others helps in leading a better and secure life. The need to form and maintain a minimum quantity of interpersonal relationships is innately present among human beings. The need to belong is therefore found to some degree in all humans in all cultures although there could be individual differences in strength and intensity as well as cultural and individual variations in how people express and fulfill this need. It would be quite difficult or impossible for any culture to eradicate the need to belong. This innate need presumably has an evolutionary basis. Forming and maintaining social bonds has both survival and reproductive benefits. Does affiliation desires increase with anxiety? In the late 1950s, Stanley Shaster attempted to study whether anxiety leads to the desire for affiliation. He brought female college students into the laboratory and created a stressful event. Shasta told the subjects that they would receive a series of electrical shocks as part of an experiment on their physiological effects. In the high anxiety condition, participants were told that the shocks would be quite painful but would cause no permanent damage. In the low anxiety condition, they were led to believe that the shocks were virtually painless. In actuality, no shocks were ever delivered. The main intention was merely to make the participants believe that they would be soon receiving these shocks. After hearing this information, the women were told that there would be a 10 minute delay as the equipment was being set up. The participants were told that they could spend their time waiting either alone in a room or in a room with another participant in the study. The preference of the participants was the dependent variable in the study. The results showed that the participants in the high anxiety condition wanted to stay with others while waiting. Even when the participants were not allowed to talk to each other, being with others was preferred. This goes to show that the presence of others as a social distraction, taking attention off from the anxiety. Also, it helps in comparing one's emotional reactions to the stressful event with another person. It has also been found that cues that suggest possible harm such as illness, danger and disaster seem to increase the need to affiliate with others. Competition for limited resources also is a very powerful factor that leads to formation of interpersonal connections. Situational factors can also affect the need for affiliation. The need for affiliation is also shaped by cultural variables. 
Now let us look at the role of affect in attraction. Positive affect leads to positive evaluations of a person while negative affect leads to negative evaluations of a person. We tend to like people who make us feel good and dislike those who make us feel bad. Emotions also affect attraction indirectly. This is known as the associated effect of emotions. This happens when another person is simply present at the same time that when a person's emotional state is aroused by someone or something. We evaluate that person positively when we are in a good mood and negatively when in a bad mood. Examples of this phenomenon can be found in experiments on subliminal perception of pleasant versus unpleasant pictures. The explanation for this is based on classical conditioning. The relationship between affect and attraction also has implications for social influence. The attempts at persuasion use the strategy of arousing positive mood states whether it is the advertisers or the salespersons who want us to buy a particular product or politicians who want us to vote for them. Now let us look at the external determinants of attraction. The first is proximity. It is generally said that close proximity fosters liking. Two people are likely to be acquainted if there is physical proximity between them. Whether it is classroom seats, hostel rooms, residential flats or office desks, proximity is a very important factor in attraction. However, with the advent of internet and social media, this may not stand to be very true, but still it is a very important factor. Students sitting on adjoining chairs are more likely to become friends. According to Zhang, repeated exposure to a new stimulus results in an increasingly positive evaluation of that stimulus. It can be said that the best predictor of whether two people will be friends is how far they live from each other. Close proximity has also been found to affect intimate relationships. The second factor is physical attractiveness. Physical attractiveness is a very powerful factor which determines our liking for others. It also influences interpersonal evaluations and mate selection. Researchers have found that most people assume that what is beautiful is good. People have a strong tendency to attribute positive qualities to physically attractive people and negative qualities to physically unattractive people. Attractiveness is generally associated with positive traits good interpersonal skills and high self-esteem. This could be because such characteristics are developed because of the way other people have reacted to their appearance. That physical attractiveness is linked to positive traits is not always the case. In some cases, physical attractiveness is also linked with negative assumptions, for example, Beautiful women are perceived as materialistic. Physical attractiveness is perhaps the most important predictor of interpersonal attraction. Since attractiveness is such an important factor in relationships, it is quite important to understand as to who is considered to be attractive. One approach in understanding this is to identify individuals who are rated as attractive and find out what they have in common. Cunningham A. All conducted a study on people from four different ethnic cultural groups and 13 countries to rate the facial attractiveness of photographed women of different races and found a high degree of consensus on who was considered to be beautiful. The researchers found a preference for large, wide-set eyes, a small nose and chin and prominent cheekbones. They also found out that women judged as attractive 
can be put under two groups those having childlike features and those having mature features. Another approach is given by Langloy and Rogman. They used computer digitizing to combine multiple faces into one leading to a composite image. They reported that composite faces are rated as more attractive than individual faces that were used to make that composite and that the more faces that are averaged, the more beautiful the resulting face. They also found that people are more attracted to symmetrical than to asymmetrical faces. Symmetrical faces are perceived as attractive because they are markers of good health and reproductive fitness. Now let's look at the factors based on interaction with others. The first is similarity. Similarity plays a very important role in interpersonal attraction. There is a famous saying that birds of a feather flock together. This finding was also confirmed in many studies. There is another saying that opposites attract. But there is strong evidence that similarity and not complementarity is the basis of attraction. It has been found that similar attitudes predict subsequent liking between students. Rosenbaum proposed the repulsion hypothesis as an alternative to this. According to this hypothesis, information about similarity has no effect. People are repulsed by information about dissimilarity. Many researches have been done on similarity dissimilarity in relation to physical attractiveness, self-concept, religious practices and the findings indicate that similarity is a very important determinant of interpersonal attraction. The next factor is reciprocity. Ever since Pacman and Secord published their landmark study, scholars have explored the reciprocity effect which refers to the tendency for people to be attracted to others who like them. In the 1950s, researchers argued that people are attracted to each other on the basis of complementarity of needs. According to this principle, we tend to like those who like us and dislike those who dislike us. This emphasis on the reward potential of being liked by others is emphasized by interdependence theory and social exchange theory which state that the social approval of others is a generalized reinforcer. The next factor is familiarity. When people come across a novel situation, they try to assess the extent to which it signals danger. This helps in ensuring survival and well-being. The preference for familiar others is hence adapted. Additional evidence in support of the attraction promoting effects of familiarity comes from research on the mere exposure effect which suggests that people tend to experience greater attraction to familiar stimuli including familiar people than to unfamiliar stimuli. This effect cannot be explained by other factors frequently confounded with familiarity such as the quality of the direct experience and it emerges even when the perceivers are not aware about gaining familiarity. One of the main reasons why familiarity promotes attraction is that humans have an inbuilt need to bond with others. Now let us look at the theories of interpersonal attraction. There are many theories to explain interpersonal attraction like social exchange theory, balance or cognitive consistency theory, equity theory and evolutionary theory. Social exchange theory states that how people feel about a relationship depends on their perceptions of the rewards and costs of being in that relationship, the kind of relationship they believe they deserve and their chances of having a better relationship with someone else. 
The outcome of a relationship is its rewards minus its costs. How satisfied one is with this outcome depends on one's comparison level and how likely one is to stay in an unsatisfactory relationship is determined by the comparison level for alternatives. Generally, the research evidence supports the theory. Equity theory argues that people are happiest when they are in relationships in which the rewards, costs and the contributions that both the parties make to the relationship are roughly equal. According to the theory, both under and over benefited partners may be motivated to restore equity although research finds that this is truer for the under benefited. The evolutionary theory states that attraction to the opposite sex occurs when someone has physical features which indicate that he or she is very fertile. This happens since it increases the chance of one's genes being passed down to the next generation. This theory also suggests that fertility in a mate is more important to men than to women. According to this theory, a woman places more emphasis on a man's ability to provide resources and protection since these are important in ensuring the successful raising of the offsprings. The balance theory is another important theory of interpersonal attraction. Thus, interpersonal attraction plays a key role in relationship formation. Given the importance of interpersonal attraction, who is attractive and what factors lead to attraction has always been and will continue to be an important area of research. Now let's summarize what we have learned. Human beings are social animals and forming and maintaining relationships with others is a very crucial aspect of our social lives. Interpersonal attraction plays a major part in relationship formation. The main internal determinants of attraction are the need to affiliate and affect. The external determinants of attraction are proximity and physical attractiveness. The factors of interpersonal attraction based on interaction with others are similarity, reciprocity and familiarity. The main theories of interpersonal attraction include social exchange theory, equity theory, evolutionary theory and balance theory. Human beings are social animals. Forming and maintaining intimate and long term relationships with others is a very crucial aspect of our social lives. Interpersonal attraction plays a key role in relationship formation. Basically, there are three main types of determinants of interpersonal attraction. Internal determinants, external determinants and factors based on interaction with others. The first internal determinant of attraction is the need to affiliate. The need to affiliate with others is one of the main concerns of humans and is crucial to psychological well-being. Forming and maintaining social bonds has both survival and reproductive benefits. In the late 1950s, Stanley Shasta attempted to study whether anxiety leads to the desire for affiliation. The subjects were told that they would receive a series of electrical shocks as part of an experiment. In the high anxiety condition, participants were told that the shocks would be quite painful but would cause no permanent damage. In the low anxiety condition, they were led to believe that the shocks were virtually painless. The participants were told that they had to wait and that they could spend time waiting either alone in a room or in a room with another participant in the study. The results showed that participants in the high anxiety condition wanted to stay with others while waiting. The second internal determinant of attraction is affect. Positive affect leads to positive evaluations of a person 
while negative affect leads to negative evaluations of a person. We tend to like people who make us feel good and dislike those who make us feel bad. Emotions also affect attraction indirectly. This is known as the associated effect of emotions. This happens when another person is simply present at the same time when a person's emotional state is aroused by someone or something. We evaluate that person positively when we are in a good mood and negatively when in a bad mood. The explanation for this is based on classical conditioning. Now let us look at the external determinants of attraction. The first is proximity. It is generally said that close proximity fosters liking. Whether it is classroom seats, hostel rooms or residential flats, proximity is a very important factor in attraction. According to Zhajong, repeated exposure to a new stimulus results in an increasingly positive evaluation of that stimulus. With repeated exposure, there is a decrease in negative emotions while an increase in positive emotions. Close proximity has also been found to affect intimate relationships. Bossert in 1932 found a clear relationship between proximity and love. In another study, Festinger, Shaster and Back found that the closer people lived, the more friendly they became. Another external determinant of attraction is physical attractiveness. Physical attractiveness is a very powerful, in fact, the most powerful predictor which determines our liking for others. It also influences interpersonal evaluations and mate selection. Researchers have found that most people assume that what is beautiful is good. People have a strong tendency to attribute positive qualities to physically attractive people and negative qualities to physically unattractive people. Dion, Bersheed and Wolster in 1972 found that physically attractive individuals are rated as having more desirable characteristics and are expected to be more successful in life. Cunningham A. All in 1995 conducted a study to rate the facial attractiveness of photographed women of different races. The researchers found a preference for large, wide set eyes, a small nose and chin, and prominent cheekbones. They also found out that women judged as attractive can be put under two groups those having childlike features and those having mature features. Another approach is given by Langlois and Rogman. They used computer digitizing to combine multiple faces into one, leading to a composite image. They reported that composite faces are rated as more attractive than individual faces that were used to make that composite and that the more faces that are averaged, the more beautiful the resulting face. They also found that people are more attracted to symmetrical than to asymmetrical faces. Now let's look at the factors based on interaction with others. Within this, the first factor is similarity. Similarity plays a very important role in interpersonal attraction. There is strong evidence that similarity and not complementarity is the basis of attraction. It has been found that similar attitudes predict subsequent liking between students. Rosenbaum proposed the repulsion hypothesis which states that information about similarity has no effect, rather people are repulsed by information about dissimilarity. The effect of similarity-dissimilarity on attraction can be explained by the following theories. Balance theory, social comparison theory, 
and adaptive response to potential dangers. The figure shows the similarity in various aspects which can lead to interpersonal attraction. The next factor is reciprocity. Reciprocity effect refers to the tendency for people to be attracted to others who like them. This emphasis on the reward potential of being liked by others is emphasized by interdependence theory and social exchange theory which state that the social approval of others is a generalized reinforcer. In one set of studies, Cottrell, Newberg and Lee asked undergraduate students to rate 31 positive characteristics in terms of how important it is for their ideal person to have. Results showed trustworthiness and cooperativeness as most important factors followed by agreeableness and extraversion. The third factor is familiarity. The preference for familiar others is adaptive since it helps in survival and well-being. Additional evidence in support of the attraction promoting factors of familiarity comes from research by Zashonk on the mere exposure effect, which suggests that people tend to experience greater attraction to familiar stimuli, including familiar people, than to unfamiliar stimuli. One of the main reasons why familiarity promotes attraction is that the humans have an inbuilt need to bond with others. Study by Kellerman, Lewis and Laird showed that experiencing brief intimacy with another person causes attraction to that person even when the people did not choose to interact with that person. There are many theories to explain interpersonal attraction. The first is the social exchange theory which states that how people feel about a relationship depends on their perceptions of the rewards and cost of being in that relationship. The second theory is the equity theory, which argues that people are happiest when they are in relationships in which the rewards, costs and the contributions that both the parties make to the relationship are roughly equal. The evolutionary theory states that attraction to the opposite sex occurs when someone has physical features which indicate that he or she is very fertile since it increases the chance of one's genes being passed down to the next generation. According to the balance theory, when two people like one another and find out that they are similar to each other in some way, this leads to a state of balance which is emotionally pleasant and vice versa. When they discover that they are dissimilar, they try to achieve balance by trying to change oneself or the other person either by misperceiving the dissimilarity or by disliking each other. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. We have learned that human beings are social animals and forming and maintaining relationships with others is a very crucial aspect of our social lives. Interpersonal attraction plays a key role in relationship formation. The main internal determinants of attraction are the need to affiliate and affect. The external determinants of attraction are proximity and physical attractiveness. The factors of interpersonal attraction based on interacting with others are similarity, reciprocity and familiarity. The main theories of interpersonal attraction include social exchange theory, equity theory, evolutionary theory and balance theory.